there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had been ill for a he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man began, became well, took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is a Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. These are really some powerful readings for us in this Lenten season. In fact, that first reading from Ezekiel is uh, uh, one of the uh, required readings for the uh, Easter Vigil, the Great Solemn Easter Vigil, the most uh, important liturgy of the entire uh, uh, church year. Uh, healing water is the theme there as well as uh, in the gospel. Uh, but it's not water that does the healing in the gospel passage when Jesus uh, enters the scene. It's rather Jesus himself who does the healing. And then we can be reminded of the gospel of, uh, Je of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well uh, and uh, how he uh, wants to offer her living water uh, that is life-giving water, uh, and he teaches us that he is this life-giving water, this healing presence of God uh, in our world and in our midst. Um, it's interesting what happens uh, in the gospel. Jesus approaches uh, Jerusalem for this Jewish feast that's going on, and he goes to the pool of Bethesda where he sees a lot of people. Um, there are always a lot of people there seeking healing in the waters there at Bethesda just inside the, uh, the gate of Jerusalem. Um, the ill, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, those who need healing in their lives, spiritual, mental, whatever, they're waiting. What they were waiting around for was to see the waters ripple. Um, it was thought in the minds of the people at the time that uh, when the angel of the Lord with healing power would come by, uh, that uh, the flutter of its uh, great wings would cause a rippling in the water, uh, and so they would rush into the water, and uh, uh, the first to uh, arrive there would be the recipient of God's healing uh, at the time. Well, this man that Jesus encounters, it says, is a paralytic. You might wonder, why is he waiting around 38 years uh, to do this? Well, if he's a paralytic, he can't get to the water first, can he? He's been waiting all this time as someone who can't walk, can't lift up his own mat, can't get to the waters before anybody else. As Jesus sees this man who's been ill for all that long, uh, lying there, and he knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, well, do you want to be well? And the man answers that he has no one to put him in the pool uh, where he hopes to be healed, and he uh, seems to be asking Jesus to put him in the water. I'm sure over 38 years he had asked a lot of people to put him in the water, uh, to give up their uh, place first and put him first instead. But with faith, uh, Jesus says, rise, take up your mat, and walk. And so with faith, the man responds to Jesus who is the healing presence of God himself. 
and the man immediately and obediently follows Jesus' command. He's healed. Now, most of us, those of you who are listening to us today uh, and are with us in prayer during this Mass, um, may not be ill. Uh, Some of you may be not crippled, though some of you may not get around as well as you used to, Uh, not lame or blind necessarily, deaf or uh, suffering any serious, serious illness. But all of us are broken in some kind of way. There is always a place somewhere in our life, any given day, that needs to be touched by the healing presence of God. Uh, Certainly, our world needs to be touched with the healing presence of God at this time of the uh, coronavirus. It is affecting our lives. All of us feel a bit stunted, whether it's in our work or our school studies or uh, our regular activities. Uh, We feel stunted, almost like a paralytic lying on a mat with, uh, uh, you know, incapable of uh, doing what it is we are used to doing. So what do we, uh, how do we invite Jesus in, uh, in our situations today? I invite you to take some time. Um, Use this time as an opportunity. Use this time of uh, self-isolation, staying uh, at home, uh, to grow spiritually, to learn to rely on the Lord in a way that maybe you wouldn't be able to unless you had this opportunity, uh, to be intentional about growing in your discipleship with the Lord, that is, to rely on Him, to uh, come to understand a little more deeply who Jesus is in your life, uh, and that his presence is a healing balm uh, for us uh, with whatever it is that we um, find ourselves struggling. Imagine yourself there at the pool of Siloam or, or the pool of Bethesda during your uh, uh, prayer time and Jesus coming up to you, not the paralytic man, but to you. And what does he say to you? And what do you say to him in response? How do you, how do you respond And then, can you imagine yourself being healed? What would being healed look like uh, in your life tomorrow? And ask the Lord to help you. and, and, And most importantly, do this in faith. If you have problems imagining yourself as healed, then say to the Lord in your prayer time with him, Lord, I believe, but... Help me where I have some unbelief. We bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church, may God help us to grow in holiness and be a light that leads many souls to salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them wisdom in protecting all in their care, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For those with chronic illness, may Christ the healer Bring them physical and spiritual healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, that during this journey of Lent, we may grow in charity and love through the graces of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all who have died in the light of faith, may they receive a place at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For David Wilkins, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and for sending us your Son, Jesus, that we might know of your healing presence in the flesh. 
We ask all these things through him who is our divine physician, healer, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. That we ask you to receive us to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer to you now with most humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, do wash away our iniquity, cleansing me from all my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will indeed be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May we receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the, the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people this time of grace and reconciliation. And as we turn back to you in spirit, you grant us hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to neighbor while we entrust ourselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on these the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become that lasting sign of your covenant, 
he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and, once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and his resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his second coming, we offer you, our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the whole human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. And be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Joel, our Administrator Bishop, Bernard, the Auxiliary Bishop, and help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, St. Lawrence, and all the saints, and two with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We make bold and dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us, your church, peace and unity in accord with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let of us God, off each other the sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ give you safe everlasting life. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament that we may find help for our bodies now and likeness in times to come. This through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a quick announcement. So um, we've made the decision to keep the doors of the church closed uh, at this time, at least through the governor's uh, decree of April 6th uh, to uh, any place where there might be 10 or more to be able to guarantee that there's uh, a, a, a distance between them. And since we don't have anybody to guarantee that that happens when people come in here to pray uh, during the day, uh, at this critical time, especially as the, um, uh, uh, the uh, Surgeon General of the country said, this is a, a critical time during this week uh, where we could see a massive increase. Uh, we want to keep you uh, safe and our parishioners healthy and well. So um, given that we do live stream everything uh, anyway, um, we encourage you to be at one with us in prayer uh, through live stream. One of the things that will happen tonight as we uh, expose the Blessed Sacrament to you to uh, be at prayer anytime today as you go online uh, here at St. Lawrence, uh, we'll gather again for the final blessing uh, of benediction, uh, but that will be preceded with solemn evening prayer. Uh, so I will lead us in solemn evening prayer. I encourage you to download the app if you not have it on your phone uh, or your device already. It's called iBreviary, um, I-B-R-E-V-I-A-R-Y, uh, and, um, and we'll do solemn evening prayer tonight. It'll be evening prayer for tomorrow's solemnity, uh, the Annunciation, a great solemnity. Uh, it's nine months exactly before the birth of Jesus, so this is really the solemnity of his uh, incarnation in his mother's womb. Uh, so... Um, Mass will be quite solemn tomorrow with music uh, at 9 a.m., and we encourage you to be back with us then as well. So tonight, 7.30 evening prayer, benediction following about 8 o'clock, and tomorrow morning, the great solemnity of the Annunciation at 9 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God.